Most people know, if we're honest with ourselves, most people know within the first few interactions if they're talking to someone who's worth dealing with or not. It's just about whether or not you choose to ignore it. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Um, alternate universe. You woke up tomorrow, you were a man. What kind of man would you be? And then give me as much detail as you can. I'd, I'd probably be a square, honestly. I'd be like super nice and kind. I'd probably read Harry Potter. <laughs> I feel like I'd be like a guy version of me, but with guy, with man conditioning. What does that look like? It looks like, I feel like I'd be like a, a gentleman kind. I'd be the one that's like opening doors and I'd be the one that's probably the average person wouldn't look at me and think that I was like a masculine man because I don't think that I'd be like er, aggressive or whatever, but I still think that I'd be like a protector type. Uh... But yeah, I think I'd be like nerd boy mixed with like athlete mixed with like a sweetie pie family person kind of situation. So, so right now, a lot of um, I talk to like younger, younger boys and they say that that archetype of dude does not have success with girls. He doesn't necessarily win unless he's like super duper attractive. So, like, why, why is the version of man that some women often describe not what they gravitate to most of the time? Mm, so, I know for me, it took me a lot of growing and learning before I started gravitating towards that kind of dude because... I was used to, my dad, I, this is maybe gonna be really bad, but he's probably never gonna watch this. So my dad is kind of like that, like center of attention, life of the party, super charismatic, like can pull any girl he wants kind of dude. And I think that's just what I was attracted to because that's who my dad was. And that's how I thought that men were supposed to be. And, um, I got older and I started learning that my dad was really not the kind of man that I wanted to date at all. I uh, really wouldn't recommend anybody dating him, but he is married currently, so I hope they are doing well. But um, so I started trying to, I started figuring out what mindset changes I really needed to make in order to have the kind of relationship I actually desire to have. Mm. So, you know, we, we've had conversations about the rift in the black community between black men and black women. What, what is your, first of all, do you think there is a rift? Do you think there's a communication divide? There is a gap, there's a chasm, whatever the case may be. And like, what is your take? How do you think about it? Yes, I do think there is a rift. When you say, what's my take? What do I think about it? What do you mean? What, what do you think is the beginning? How do you think we should be having the conversation? Do you think we're, we're doing it wrong? Do you think we're missing something? Do you think we're framing it the wrong way? Like, what, what is your overall philosophy on that? Empathy. Say more. I think... If as much as we can in conversations with each other, our goal is to empathize with and understand the other person then, and to not take it personally as we're listening, that 
will go a long way in terms of our communication because I think that one, it's hard to understand the other, the opposite sex's experience, especially when you understand your experience and how the opposite sex has impacted your experience. And two, it's hard not to be triggered when someone's talking about their experience with the opposite sex. So when I know that I've been through a bunch of shit with black men, and then here's a black man telling me the things that they've been through with black women. Well, if I'm not being empathetic and if I'm not uh, making sure not to take things personally, then my automatic reflex is to defend. And I don't think that that's productive in these conversations. What, what is one thing, a few things you think black men are missing when we enter into conversation with black women? One thing you're missing. Or doing wrong or approaching. Is there, is there an approach that we are taking that is ineffective? Like what is one thing you wish we knew or understood? One thing that I wish y'all knew or understood I would say this is maybe going to sound weird, but I would say I wish that y'all understood from the beginning of the conversation that we love y'all and we want y'all and we do need y'all and we know that we need y'all, but we're scared to love and want and need y'all. And so a lot of times I feel like the response that we have is one of fear. Um, it's one of like, to some degree, trying to, to maintain distance so that we're not hurt again. And I feel like if y'all understood that a lot of times we're coming from a place of being hurt and wounded, then you might take certain things less personal as well and understand that it's not it's not that we want to be against you. It's that figuring, I just, it's that we're scared. It's that we're scared to be on the same page and to be on the same team for fear of, I would say getting hurt again. Because a lot of black women have gotten hurt by black men. And I think that the same is true, you know, the other way around. A lot of black men have gotten hurt by black women. And I feel like there's a lot of pain and fear on both sides. How, how do, um, as black men are entering into dialogue with black women with our own pain, how do we navigate that? Like, in, in your opinion, what, what is the best way for, so like now I understand that you are afraid to want me because you're afraid I might let you down, right? Mm -hmm. How do I navigate that with my own baggage and my own trauma and the whole nine to bridge that gap and get through that hard layer of, you know, I don't need nobody. Yeah, honestly, with certain women, there's gonna be nothing that you can do. I think that both parties need to heal as much as they can on their own. Um, and then when those conversations are had, if we can have them in love, like have them with love, assume positive intent, again, not to take things personally, have empathy. I think there are gonna be some conversations where this is a conversation that we're having about black men and their experiences. And so we're gonna focus on black men and their experiences. And we're not gonna bring up black women and, and our experiences right now because this is what this focus is currently. And then I think there are other conversations where it's like, this is a conversation that's focused on black women. We're not going to bring up the struggles of black men right now because this conversation is focused on black women. And I think that gives each party an opportunity to feel listened to and understood um, while also giving them an opportunity to, um, to listen and understand. 
I think a lot of times what I see is that men are trying to share their experiences and women are trying to share, share their experiences as well. Like we're both trying to share our experiences over top of each other. And it's like oppression Olympics. Like, oh, well, you experienced this. Well, I experienced that. Well, you experienced that. Well, I experienced that. And it's like, okay, it's not really a productive conversation. No one's feeling like they're being heard and understood. And until people feel like they're being heard and understood, they can't really hear and, or understand anybody else. In the beginning, you mentioned um, some people are just like not going to be receptive and it, it doesn't, it's not going to work. How do you make that distinction? What, what do you think are some telltale signs maybe that you view as even in friendships, right? Um, to, to distinguish the type of person who is, they might still have like an outer shell, but they are willing to, they are hungry for um, a breakthrough, <laughs> pun intended. So you're asking, how do you figure out if someone is worth the investment? How do you figure out if someone is worth the investment? I feel like you pay attention. Most people know, if we're honest with ourselves, most people know within the first few interactions if they're talking to someone who's worth dealing with or not. It's just about whether or not you choose to ignore it. People's intuition's strong. Like, I can say every person that I've dated where it ended up not working out for ABC XYZ reason, I could point back to stuff in the beginning that where they showed me who they were. I just didn't choose to believe them essentially. So I feel like having conversations, having actual conversations, you know, so you can, you can start to understand another person's mindset and pay attention in those conversations. Ask hard questions and ask important questions. Ask things that matter to you. See if you're on the same page to see how they respond, um, to see if they get triggered by certain things and how they handle being triggered. When they're triggered, um, do they lash out? Or when they're triggered, do they have a conversation about it so that you can understand their trigger and y'all can work through that or, or whatever? Because um, triggers could be um, a moment of destruction or it could be a, a moment where you come together. So I think that conversations are really important. And that's why I think things like dates are important. Like having different experiences with people are important. Seeing how they interact with other people and in other spaces. I think it's just about being patient and observing the person that you are saying that you want to get to know. Part of um, what happens sometimes, and I'm pretty crit critical of it, some guys have a Superman mindset. They want to save. They want to, they want to rescue the damsel in distress. Yeah. And those end up being the most damaged and hurt men in the end because they're the ones who get screwed over, right, badly. What is a... Um, what is your perspective on that men who, Will Smith, men who might have seen the signs in the beginning, but there is a sense of because of me, she could be better. There is a beautiful person inside of her. And hopefully through my positive example, hopefully through me, modeling the version of manhood she never saw, she would become the best version of her. Like, what, what would you say to those men? I would say that's beautiful. And I would say be realistic about it. Uh, I think that could happen. And I think that it, it does happen relatively often. You know, people get into relationships with each other and they make each other better. The other person has to want to be better, for one. 
the other person has to be working with you to be better. So if, if you see the sun, the moon, and the stars in them, and they can't even see a light bulb in themselves, then there's not, like there's only so much that you're gonna be able to do. And I feel like you're gonna deplete yourself doing it and you're gonna come out of that relationship a more broken person. And it's tough, but sometimes the best thing and the most loving thing that you can do for another person and for yourself is to step away from that kind of situation even when you really care about them. Again, you can do it with love. Uh, it's gonna suck for everybody involved, but sometimes that's, that is what it, what it has to be. If what you're, and, and some of it is just, you're gonna have to determine on your own um, who's worth the sacrifice because every relationship's gonna come with sacrifices, but there are some times where you can't, it's not your responsibility to make someone into the greatest version of themselves, especially if, if they're not working to do it themselves. It's your responsibility to hold space for them as they're working through it. It's your responsibility to, to be there, to be supportive of their journey, to be, um, you know, a hug when they need it, to be, you know, you're there in a supporting role. You should not be the leading role in their healing journey. So I guess maybe that would be the biggest way to, to kind of determine, um, do you stay or do you go? And if, if you are, if you're with someone and it is hurting you, it is to your detriment, it is um, causing you pain, it is okay to walk away. I recommend it. Um, in the vetting process, I feel like it's just that it's vetting. I don't think that it should be this like grueling, painful thing when you're dating someone. Yeah. Once you're in a long committed relationship, maybe you're married. That's when the challenges are, they're going to come inevitably. Shit's going to get hard. But at that person, you have the, you have confidence in the person that you chose to be your partner because you vetted them on the front end. So it's like vet people on the front end. <laughs> be a little bit of an asshole about it. Don't be an asshole to them, but like don't compromise your, your standards and your boundaries for someone, especially you're like you're not married to them yet. Why would you, why would you do that? Don't do that. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to leave. That's men and women, I would say.